Hey YouTube, I'm just doing a quick video today. I um, wanted to reply uh, to some information that uh, Robski from the AK Operators Union put out recently about the uh, Tantal rifles. Um, he was doing a video about the AK selector lever, how to use them, how they work and everything like that. Um, and he mentioned the Tantal briefly uh, because it has this weird little uh, thing on the left hand side of the rifle. Now this in, in the correct configuration in the military guns this is not the safety selector at all. This actually cycles through the three fire modes. Um, the Tantal on the military models has semi, full auto, and burst capabilities. Which, um, this is actually a, a Nodak Spud receiver for the specifically for the Tantal with these markings. And it cycles through, you can see say, there's a semi-automatic, semi-automatic, uh, I believe, I'm, I can't remember which one is which, but I believe it's... Uh, burst and full auto uh it's one, one way or the other i believe um and so this selector like i said it does not it, it's it's does not control uh the safety in any way whatsoever the safety bar is an entirely separate part that still sits on the right side of the rifle just like on any other ak it goes up and down um now where it's easy to get that confused is because the the u.s versions um for some reason or another, when they were imported, Sentry or whoever assembles them, they drill hole. They they let's see. Let me get the focus. They drill holes through both the uh, safety and the fire control the uh, um, fire mode selector, and so and then they put a uh, roll pin through there. And what that does is it kind of uh, links them together. So you can use the, in theory anyway, to, uh, you can use the fire mode selector to move the safety up and down from, uh, from safe to fire and vice versa. Now in practice, you can only move it from fire to safe. Um, moving it downwards from safe to fire is pretty much impossible. Um, now the thing is though, by locking these two parts together, you cannot take out the, um, fire control group, um, retaining plate and this is what holds your uh your trigger pin which is which would normally be right here and your uh hammer pin in place um so that's a bit of an issue then because if you need to clean back up here in the back of your receiver maybe uh, install a new trigger group um you can't do that because of the way they have this set up uh, mine i actually took a dremel and um Dremel far enough into there where I could just pull the uh, the roll pin out that was holding it locked into place. Um, so, like I said, so th this is not how the normal rifle is meant to function. This is only some sort of side effect because of uh, being assembled in the U.S. I don't know if this is something to do with ATF regulations or not. I seriously doubt that because simply removing that pin and allowing these parts to move freely. Uh, of each other has no effect whatsoever on the rifle's function in any way whatsoever. So, um, like I said, I did this so I could I could be able to play with the parts down here in the trigger group, um, you know, be able to take them out, clean them, things like that. Uh, say, for example, you have a bad spring in your disconnector, you want to change your hammer spring, something like that, you know, your hammer trigger spring, you know, you have to be able to take these two parts apart uh, to be able to do that because, because your retaining plate is held in place by your fireman selector. Anyway, there you go guys. I uh, just wanted to put that out there. I don't know if anybody's really done a video on this before, so figured it's not exactly common knowledge, at least on YouTube anyway. So there you go. Y'all guys have a nice day. Thanks for watching.